I was born in the Bronx, South Bronx, uh, actually around 171st, 170th College Avenue. Um, we got burned out, then um, as a young kid, probably like five, six years old, we came over to the South Bronx, 156 in Fox, and we was raised in the shelter. Um, it was five of us at the time, and then my baby brother, um, my mother was pregnant with him, and like six, seven months into the shelter, she gave birth with him gave birth to him, so it wound up being six of us in the shelter. And that was crazy. <laughs> she was nuts. Is that including um, your pops too? Yeah, including my pops. So it was eight of us, eight, eight, eight family households. How was that? It's crazy. You just describe, like, how does, how does um, I mean, I've never been in a shelter, so describe like- Nah, you gotta just imagine, it's like, it's crazy because you, at that time, you don't know, like, like how bad it is because on the block, it was like two, three shelters. So your friends is growing up just like you. So it's, you don't see nothing wrong until you hit that corner where you go to school and then you snapping and then somebody that know your business is like a kid. It's like, yeah, you from the shelter, you live in the shelter, you don't got nothing. So start to hit you like, damn, like the fuck. And how, how old were you at, at this time? Um, Probably like eight, nine. So I was young. Yeah. And then, um, so then what was, what was the Bronx like at that time? Shit was crazy, man. We talking about um, we talking about like the '90s, early '90s. It was bananas, you know. Um, it's like a lot of abandoned buildings. Like right now, it looks like a little good, but it was a lot of junkyards, abandoned buildings. Us flipping on dirty mattresses, us in um, abandoned buildings, like a whole building. Just imagine like a hundred apartments, four floors, and it's abandoned. So you going in, you see like homeless people, you see dudes having sex with um, hookers and like we just trying to pick the right apartment so we can go in and just have fun. And you're eight, nine years old. Yeah, and then I'm with wing worms and shit, it's crazy. And that's, that's, I remember when um, Ronald Reagan came to town and then that lady was yelling at all the news, that was right near the Bronx, right? Yeah, that was actually around the neighborhood. Where I'm, yeah, him and they Koch came through that. Okay. And they said, uh, it looks like a war zone. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. I mean, so you're coming up, you're eight, nine, ten years old. That's gotta affect you, but you don't know the effect because you're such a kid. But looking yeah. back on it, um, did it affect you positively or negatively or at all? Every, everything. You know, it was already negative, you know, so it only could affect me in a positive way. It's just like I remember those days, you know. Um, at that time, father was strung out, you know. Um, my mother's trying to hold everything together. And then you realize it when you get older, how crazy that was. Like, like my mother was 24, was six of us. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. You know, so you don't you don't really realize how bananas that is. Because when you're growing up, you just know her as a mom. And then when you reach 24, 25, you're like, God damn, she had six of us at this time. It's crazy, man. Um, how did that affect the way you perceive, like, um, generating an income and having money in your pocket? Because you, you didn't come up with it. So how did that affect the way you look at money and handling money? Oh, shit. I mean, it, 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 it affected it crazy. It's like, you got to go extra hard. Like we, like me, I really take a dollar serious. So, like, some, like, it's easy for me to do things for people that don't have the number that I want. And they say they got this much. Because still, I still think about when my mother had to bust her ass all day. And like after taxes, every two weeks, she would probably get like a check for like six fifty, six, six fifty, seven hundred. Mm -hmm. My father in the tunnel going out there freezing, me putting his vest on every day, him putting on two like a, a, a the vest, the hoodie, the you coat. The club tunnel? Yeah, the tunnel. Oh. Yep. Um, he was um one of the big security guards over there, um, security over there. So it was like, like him doing that and being out all night. And then having a day job as well, being like a dean for a foster um, care high school. It was crazy, man. So me knowing that and people calling me up, I got 3000 for you for a first night. That's crazy. Because I still remember how much like it took. And it just still wasn't enough. But we we, we, we worked. My uncle, who uh, passed away, but um, he always used to have the Walkman. So when he used to come to my house, he used to be, 
popping his head, and I used to be looking at him like, looked like he was always in his zone because I'll be calling him, he can't hear me. And then he's whispering, and it's just like he's enjoying himself. And I'm like, what is he doing? Yo, let me listen to that. Yo, let me put it on. And... What song was the first song you memorized? Well, he used to he used to be like he used to always listen to Rock Him. Mm. Like Rock Him fanatic. He used to have the cassette. So um let me listen to it. I'm just bobbing my head and I'm like, yo, I need this. I mean he bought me one and it was just like it was just a zone. But my little brothers and sisters, we used to have the radio on all day. It's like like we'll we'll be in the house and we'll start singing the songs. It's like take your mind off of what's the reality of what's going on, like there's no food in the house. We were waiting for, probably for my grandmother to come over town, from across town, to maybe give us something. Where was she from? Um, she's from College Avenue. You know, um, come over to to where we was at and probably bring some groceries, whatever. When the times was rough, it was like I said, my mother, father was strung out. Like at the time, he'll work in the Hunts Point Market, so he'll leave probably like on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and we won't see him again till like a Thursday. Mm -hmm. But he was on drugs anyway. But there's only so much he can help at that time, so my mother got six of us. And she don't got no job and we in the shelter, so. How, how does your mom explain your dad being off for three, four, five days at a time? I mean, she didn't have to explain it to me because I was smart, you know, I knew what was going on, I seen it. So I knew he was just messed up. You know, I knew the drugs was making him do that because I knew my father before the drugs, you know, but he's clean now, everything good. Yeah. You would never think he on drugs, but yeah. back then it was crazy. So I guess, who would you say were the biggest influences on you as a person, as a musician, as a rapper, like who influenced you the most? Big, big. You know, the crazy thing is, um, just like going into the Biggie story, is that's how I found out he died. Like my father was working that night and he came in a little bit early. Um, and he came in, I'm like, yo, what's up, man? He's like, yo, DJ turn off the music, man. He said he killed Big in LA. And I was like, just messed my whole chart up, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, Big was a big influence, man. You know, um, cause it was like, when I heard his record, Juicy, as a little kid, and um, I'm listening to it, but it's not like now, you know what I'm saying? When you listen to a record, you don't know how to do look, you go on YouTube. Yeah. So you just gotta wait till you catch it on Video Music Box, That's or, right. you know what yeah. I'm saying? And as far as, you know, the visual go. So I'm like, Yo, this dude is dope. And then I see him, big, big black dude rocking. I'm like, yo, this, this, this kid's this dude is dope, you know? So, yeah, that's crazy. But Big had the biggest influence. So, like, I guess talk more about, I mean, you're from the Bronx. Like, hip hop yeah. is synonymous with the Bronx. Yeah. How does, I mean, does that, what does that mean to you? Um, being the Bronx, the birthplace is a big thing, you know? Um, take pride in it. You know, I wish we had more as far as the boroughs, you know. We we really go we really go hard. We go harder than people think, but I mean, you know, the the greatest rap out the Bronx we lost at a young and you know, big pun, rest mm -hmm. in peace. You know, but shout out to my boy Fat Joe. Like he been holding it down for like twenty years, man, and he's still rocking. You know, but you know, then you got the greats care rest one. Shout out to him, it was big for me. Because, you know, he's the um, pioneer, he's the legend, and he asked me to be on his last album. So me going to Showbiz joint, rocking on the Showbiz beef for KRS one for his album, that was huge. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just so BX, man. You know, anything with the Bronx, I try to, right. you know, but yeah, it's, it's, it's huge, it's the birthplace. And you, t you talk about New York, we ain't talking about, we talking about the birthplace of a hip hop culture that's like, world renowned mm -hmm. and it happened here where we we're doing this interview at so that's crazy it's kind of crazy how you think about you know hip-hop is it's, it's literally people that have nothing just making a beat and then yeah. just saying words over it and in 30 years it influences the whole world like there's, there's yeah. no getting around it you know what i mean and, and the crazy thing about it i always say that hip-hop generated from poverty yeah i i don't think if it was if the, the dudes if the people was rich and they had things to do. Nobody would ever just be like, you just bang on this. You had to be bored out your mind right. to start banging on stuff and start making it a beat. Bored, nothing to do, no money, and that's what happened, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah. it's beautiful. 
talk to me about the transition from, I guess, school to, I guess, whatever you do in the streets to, to music. I want to talk a little bit about what you were doing before you got into music. Uh, you know, um, I dropped out. It's just crazy. I, I, I shouldn't have did it. You know, I was always smart. I've missed a lot of days because of my illnesses. So I was always behind as far as days. Like, it's a crazy story. Is um, one time I missed like two weeks. I went to school for one day. Next day, teacher gave a test. I scored the 89 on the test. I was going to lunch. She grabbed me. She's like, listen, I know you cheated. You wasn't here for the two weeks. You have to take it again. You can't go to lunch. You got to go in the room and you got to take the test again. What a terrible teacher. Now I told her, I said, listen, I know what I got wrong. You make me take this test again. I'm going to get a higher grade and I hope you keep that grade. And she was like, I see what I can do. But I doubt that. Right. I want him taking the game out of 93. Mm -hmm. Stupid ass lady kept the 89 right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I mean, it was it was cool. It's just that I remember the last year, the people that I hung out with, they graduated, they left. So I remember my um, next year was supposed to be my last year. But I knew I'd have to do like some night school and summer school just for the days that I missed, you know. But the work was never a problem. So I remember me. In school, like first month, she was hell, man. I couldn't be there, man. I I was just like, yo, everybody's gone. I can't take this, mm -hmm. and I just started getting distracted as far as streets go, and I just stopped, you know, started doing things I was supposed to be doing. Um, and um, uh, it hit when one of my good friends was doing things for me, and my man, he was, you know, and he got hit, you know, and. He had to do six years and it was like six years of his life gone and it's like you feel like damn man like he's the cause of it and he, he moved it's crazy man but then I, that's just what it is then and in the meet while he was in it that's when i really got connected with the, the music even strong because i always can rap i can always freestyle and play around but right then and there that's when i first walked into in them years during them years that's when i first went into a studio, like a real studio, recorded myself. You talk about your family, you talk about your father and your siblings. Since we've been here, you talked to two of your sisters. Yeah. Um, your grandmother, you had, a, you had a big family. Yeah, man, my grand. Rest in peace, my grandfather just passed away. His funeral was Sorry, actually man. out, actually around the corner. Um, yeah, uh, it's just a lot of us, and it's just a loving family, you right. know what I'm saying? So. Um, and rest in peace to my my girl, her grandmother too, you know. Yeah. And um, you know, my uncles, two of my uncles, they passed. Um, one of them died in my arms. He got shot right on College Avenue in front of my grandmother's building. And um, that was crazy. This is a lot of shit, man. Like, this is crazy. This is what makes Fred. What, what do you mean die in your arms? How old are you? Nineteen. You cradled him? Yeah, it was crazy because no, my grandmother always got this weird shit with her. She came outside and she was going somewhere with my mother and she said, I don't know, he did something to make her mad and she was just like, go upstairs, get away from him. He's up to no good. And I'm like, I'm my uncle, man. I'm just, I'm like, go upstairs for real, get away from him. I'm like, all right, I'm like, I'm waiting for them to leave and I'm gonna come back down chill with him. Was he older than you? Yeah, um, he is like 35. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I uh, went upstairs and I was talking to my um, homegirl on the phone. And it was like five, five minutes would pass. This kid knocked on the door that lived upstairs on the fifth floor. And I'm like, yo, I said, yo, I think your uncle just got shot. I, don't know, I just left him, man. I said, you bugging. He's like, I, I, I might be, I might be bugging. I close the door, I'm talking to Shorty. He's like, what happened? I said, oh, stupid ass nigga from upstairs talking about my uncle got shot, man. I just left this. Then the door knocked again. I opened up the door, I said, yo, what up? Nah, man, I think I think he got shot, man. I think you should go downstairs just to, to, just to make sure. I'm like, all right. And I tell her, like, yo, listen, let me go check to see what the fuck's name. So I go downstairs, and this nigga's just rolling around. He got bullet holes in him. People's coming down the block. So I pick him up. And I'm like, yo, what happened? He's throwing up all the blood and shit. He ain't looking at me. Eyes rolling back as I'm looking. It was good. Just mad shit, blood all over, like, hustle, like crazy shit. 
that. My style is a collage of the greats that I fell in love with with hip with hip hop, the Eminem's, the Jay Z's, the Biggies, the um Nas, the Big Puns. I and with a twist of my experiences and my humor and me growing up. It's a collage of all of them put together with a splash of frat. So it makes it original. But like in the, in this in this in, at this time you could you could you could hear that I'm not trying to sound like anybody. You want that real shit, you want them bars, you know Fred got it, you know. And I'm gonna keep doing that. Obviously, um, you know, the music industry is going through a tremendous change. Uh -huh. Record sales don't impact as much. What would you say that is the toughest part about being an artist in 2014? The toughest part is, as far as, especially with me, is um, getting the music out. It's, I need, I, I think what I'm saying and, and how I put my thing together, I think the people need to hear it. It's like, it's a good thing where, like you got 10, 20 people a day They'll hit me on their Instagram and when I throw out a video, like uh, 500 people hit me and they, yo, I just, I just, yo, they, they just put me on to you. It's good. I, I'm, I pre I'm appreciative of that. But it's like at the end of the day, it's like, what the hell you mean you just heard of me? You know what I'm saying? So I, I need everybody. I need, I need it to be a wide range because I think there's people out there that like certain rappers that they don't know Fred the Godson is and if they, hear, if they heard his music. They'll take him serious and they'll they'll become a fan. It's like I need that Beyonce and Drake, their impact. Like whenever they drop something, it stops. It's like this girl just dropped the album on Instagram and said surprise. Well, that being said, where do you see yourself in a year from now, or three years from now, or five years from now? I see myself ten times bigger than what I am. I'm not talking about weight even. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, us just rocking, man, all of us, man. Like, right now it's a grind, but we're grinding for a reason. I go hard, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, all of us, we've been blessed to live comfortable and, you know, whatever my daughter wants and needs, she got family, whatever. But it's still a lot more out there, you know. Um, it's It's crazy. Because the good thing about this situation is for an unsigned rapper, like this is for unsigned artists to want to get busy independent. This is the, if you want to stay independent, this is a good time for him, I think. Because it's like, and I'm, and I'm getting off subject, I'm just talking mm -hmm. just, just hip hop. I, I want to share this with people. It's, you know, when Big and Nas before they got signed. And even when they got signed in the beginning stages, you couldn't get in contact with them. You had to know somebody that knew somebody had a beeper number and then right. they'll call somebody, you wait by the phone. This is the era where you could just hit your artist, one, two, three. You hit his Instagram, you hit his Facebook, you hit his Twitter, you wait for a call back, he'll hit you or his staff will hit you and there you got it. You got a verse, you got a show and even if you're selling mixtapes or albums, you can do it like that as well, you know? So it's 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 good for that person. And it's good for me, because I am that person right now, but I don't want to stay that person. So so what can we expect? What, what's next? I mean, I see the Fat Boy Fresh yeah, as, Fat Boy, as the background. What can we expect? Fat Boy Fresh um, is next. You're going to expect a whole lot of viral, everything coming from Fred DeGarza. Like it's gonna whatever you could possibly do as a rapper, Fred DeGarza is gonna do it. Like you're gonna look and go, something's going on with this kid. Cause, like I'm a private person, you know what I'm saying. So, I'll do stuff, get back in the cut, stay in the studio, don't say nothing, put nothing, and then keep doing things like that. When you when the mixtape pop up, the mixtape pop up. In the meantime, they're gonna book me for shows and this and that. And I'm gonna do this, but right now we about to get crazy. What is it that gives you confidence? And what is it that inspires you? Where I was from, man. It's like six kids in the shelter. And now I look and everybody's doing their thing. My brother's super um, heavyweight, Golden Glove champion. My sister just 
got a you know, second salon right now in Florida. Mother and father got a big house in Florida. I got beautiful nieces and nephews, beautiful daughter, and everybody's alive, everybody's still rocking, you know what I'm saying? My brothers and sisters, like everybody's good, you know what I'm saying? So um, with that, I know I'm here, I'm here for something. And I think this is what it is. And this is what I put my effort my, and my strength into. You gotta understand, man, the illnesses I have, the medicines I take every day, I'm not supposed to be moving. I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm not supposed to be up at 12 midnight. I'm supposed to be getting like 10 hours of sleep. And then when I get up resting in the house, fuck that. Like, it is what it is, man. Like I got them illnesses and I'm a, it's, it's, uh, I'm a roll with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna be sitting up there crying, complaining. Why me, why me? Nah, man, it's rock, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? When it's all said and done, what do you want your music and your legacy to be associated with? With your grades. I want them to say, from when niggas pull your card and all you all day about the best MCs, Biggie, Jay-Z, and Fred. <laughs> Biggie, Jay-Z, and God. Yeah. That's all I want.